All right, we'll kick off our uh, afternoon uh, session this afternoon with um, the groundhog. Oh wait, no, it's Brad Keselowski, the driver of the okay, the driver of the number two Miller Lite Ford for Team Penske. Um, Brad, obviously an important track, an important race for you. Uh, give us your initial uh, feedback on. Uh, on the car and the practice, and uh, what what we'll be looking at uh, uh, from an entertainment perspective this weekend. Yeah, sure. Uh, but before I get started, I think um, probably ought to say something about um, you know Gordy Howe and being in Detroit. Um, you know, kind of a, a huge deal if you're from this area. I know there's probably a lot of local media here that are, or some that are watching or listening uh, that are. So, I'd like to send my thoughts out to that. I kind of I know he lived really close to me when I was growing up. So. It's a big deal for all my friends and family, even if it's not for everyone here. But uh, that's a guy who left a, a tremendous legacy on his sport. So I'd uh, like to say we're thinking about him and his family um, and, and start with that note. But uh, talking about um, this race weekend um, here, uh, you know, just so much going on. I mean, uh, look at uh, the rules packages. Certainly uh, the thing that's on everyone's mind is the, the biggest piece of the equation. Uh, with respect to the, the new 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 lower downforce uh, package uh, that's being kind of debuted this weekend. Uh, the speeds are, of course, blazing fast uh, down the straightaway, but quite a bit slower in the corner, and that's been uh, interesting. It's kind of a nice change of pace. Uh, we're all kind of learning together uh, how that will affect the racing, and I don't think anyone really has an answer until they drop the green on Sunday. Uh, which seems to normally be the case here where the races are always a lot different than practice and qualifying. So uh, I guess we'll see, but I feel really good about it. I know it's a lot of fun to drive. You know, you enter the corner at almost uh, 220 mile an hour and you, you turn left and the front goes and the, the back doesn't always go with it. And uh, that's uh, quite a feeling for sure. But uh, it's a, a unique challenge. I think it's going to bring out some of the best racing that we've uh, seen in quite some time. So I'm, I'm really optimistic about it. And uh, hoping that we can uh, turn this opportunity into a, a victory here at Michigan. We've been really close with uh, a handful of uh, second and third place finishes over the last um, few years here. And uh, I feel confident that uh, we can find that last little piece to, to make it a win here uh, because we're on quite a streak with, uh, with our team. We've uh, had a lot of strong runs over the last few weeks. Uh, and uh, that's added up uh, to a win uh, at Talladega, I think, uh, four or five weeks ago, and uh, uh, a steady kind of moving up in the points. Uh, we've moved up from sixth or seventh now to, to third, and uh, you know, not too far off of uh, being able to have a shot at, at taking over the points lead uh, in normal points and taking over the points lead in uh, chase standings if we could get a win here this weekend. So uh, that's our focus. We want to make that happen, and uh, I think we're off to a good start. Thank you, Brad. We'll uh, open it up to the media for questions. Just raise your hands and we'll uh, bring a mic to you. We'll actually start with Mike over here to my left. And then we'll go over to Reed. Mike on after. the mic. Mike on the mic. Mike on the mic. Go ahead, Mike. Brad, just to follow up, and I'm sorry uh, to ask you this question first, but <laughs> Gordy uh, was the ultimate Mr. Hockey um, team guy, tough guy. Everything that uh, you know, a young athlete like yourself would uh, like to, uh, you know, be known for doing. And a little bit more on uh, your thoughts, and uh, you know, how how much uh, hockey did you watch, and uh, how big a fan were you? Well, he, he retired before, um, you know, I had a chance to really be a hockey fan. But uh, just being a Detroit person in, in general, and of course, I don't think you can grow up in this area and not be a a hockey fan uh, of the Red Wings or, and more. Uh, but looking at that, um, you know, I think he had more than just the respect of his community. I think he had the respect of his entire sport, uh, which is hard to do um, for anyone. Uh, and, uh, you know, he had such a, a fan base and admiration, and it's almost 40 years since he's re retired. Um, you know, that, that really says something about someone. And, um, you know, in the community, he was someone that kind of remained a pillar after he finished his career. You know, there's just so much you could say about a guy like that. It's hard to put it in, but certainly a, a tremendous legacy for his sport and a huge loss. All right, over to you, Reed. 
uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Uh, you talked about the disparity of the front stretch speed and the cornering speeds here. Uh, back in the in the old competition package, nobody ever talked about brakes at Michigan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that going to be a factor now, and, and is the package going to have to be beefed up? Yeah, Reed, I'd say we talked about brakes, and the conversation we talked about brakes before was how little can we get away with? And now it's probably going to be, uh, you know, how much more do we need to put on? So. Certainly a, a different conversation with that delta, you know, the difference between the, the fastest and the, the slowest speeds on the track. Um, and, and as to how that's going to all come together, I, I, we're going to learn together. You know, that's that's really the thing I would say is, uh, you know, my intuition says the track's going to get really wide in the corners because you're going to get crazy sideways loose and you're going to use up a lot of real estate. And that could make for some really fun racing um, back to kind of the old Michigan. So. Uh, all those things are, are really interesting. I might be completely wrong. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows the, the, the real answer there. So um, when we get going, we'll kind of all find out. But um, certainly a, a much different challenge than what we've had in the past here at Michigan. Uh, and I don't think that's a, a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. All right. Uh, next we'll go to Bob and then over to Claire B. Lang. Uh, Bob Hawker, CSPN. Did your interview think, with Gordon today, uh, did you all hug it out or... Uh, there were no hugs, I can confirm. There were no hugs. There were some handshakes. I don't know what other physical contact I should talk about. but uh, I guess without maybe giving away the toll interview or whatever, did you guys, I mean, did you express, did you talk more about what you said? And, I mean, does it, did he say anything to you? Yeah, I mean, we talked at length. Um, you know, I think uh, there's certainly some differing op opinions. And, um, you know, uh, I don't necessarily know if that's going to change, uh, but it's nice to be able to have those conversations um, in a one-on-one -on -one format. Uh, of course, there was a camera there, so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, probably a little bit of both, but uh, I feel like it's uh, it's good, and hopefully we can move on. You know, my big thing is, um, you know, I, I don't want somebody who's invested in another team talking about my race car in a derogatory form, or even if it's a perceived derogatory form, I don't think that's right. Uh, and I'm going to defend my team uh, in those situations, no matter who it is. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, one particular person. Um, and beyond that, I, I think, you know, he has a position that requires, um, you know, his insight. Uh, but there's some limitations to what insight I, I think is fair play for that position when you're still invested in the sport. And I feel like that was over the line. Uh, and not just that particular example, but a number of other examples on other broadcasts. Uh, and so, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, if anyone wants to criticize me and how I drive the race car, that's, that's one thing. But um, not my team and not for things that could be perceived as um, self-serving. We'll swing over to the to your left, Brad, with Claire B. Lang, and then back over to Kenny Bruce. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. Two quick things. One, what was the reaction from your team to you speaking up? Because you're defending your team here quite strongly, and do they kind of rally around that you would do that? And then second, you know, there's always a feeling that we love when people are opinionated, but then when they are, it's like, you know, they're vanilla, they don't talk, and when they do, you get criticized. Nah, people love opinions as long yes. as they agree with those opinions. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> how do you feel about being opinionated and how that's accepted? Because I don't think that's going to change, and do you think people really want to hear what you have to say as a driver? Um, yeah, I think some people want to hear what I have to say, and there's a lot of people that don't. I mean, that's okay. Um, you know, there's there's so many lines to walk. I think to answer your first part was with my team's response, Claire. Uh, and I think, you know, I hope and I think I see it in them that it means a lot to them. Um, I think they know that I'm going to have their back and it goes both ways. Um, and I think they felt pretty slighted over not just this past weekend, but other uh, events in the past in this particular category. And I just want to make sure that um, you know, I didn't just walk away from the situation and said that's their problem because it's all of our problem. That's what a team is, um, as long as you think it is a problem, right? Uh, so I, I think that it, it means something to them. It's, you know, a question for them, perhaps uh, for the individual guys, uh, not myself to get the best answer on that. But um, so to answer your question, that's kind of how I feel. That what was what was the other question how, about being opinionated? I mean. Yeah, it's tough. Um, it, it'd be a lot easier if I didn't have a lot to say, <laughs> and if I didn't, um, 
if I didn't uh, chime in from time to time. And I think um, I've tried to be a, a little bit um, maybe less forthcoming than I have in, in, in the past because it can be uh, perceived, whether real or not, as a distraction. And uh, I think for the most part, um, I'm doing a, a little better job of that than in years past as I've, as I've gotten older. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm still not going to speak out when I feel like it, it, something needs to be said. Uh, one of the things I think that's great is there's more forums now than ever before to make the sport better, uh, whether it's driver councils, RTAs, and, and all these different things that are going on. And so the need to be outspoken and opinionated is um, uh, still there, but it's a lot less prevalent in this forum. forum. Uh, than maybe what it was before. So, um, you know, I think that uh, that's been very helpful as well and, and maybe why I'm a little bit less. But uh, still, when someone makes an attack at or what I perceive to be an attack at my team, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up for it. Okay, we'll go next to Mr. Bruce. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Brad, I, I didn't want to continue down this road. I have an, another question about the arrow package. but Sure, go ahead. But you... What you've been talking about made me think, did you say something earlier about guys in the booth shouldn't be still involved in the sport? Um, am, I, am I wrong there? Was I made a, a comment it? that, um, and I'm somewhat paraphrasing because I, I can't remember yeah. word for word, that uh, if you're invested in the sport, I don't think you should be in a position to um, be in the booth. Yes, I did make that comment. I would probably rephrase that. Uh, with time uh, that I feel like if you're you know in a booth or in a position such as that not just the booth it could be anything uh, and you're invested in the sport that I think you should probably just bow out of some conversations that are of course a conflict of interest and um, that you're it's okay to to be up there in the booth if you can respect the you know limitations that you've almost self implied to, to being a journalist um, and so, you know, I think people have asked me, well, what is it like uh, being in the booth for the Xfinity races? Because right. I have the relationship, obviously, with Team Penske, and they compete uh, in that series even when I'm not driving. And so uh, I would say that, you know, in those situations where something comes up about that team or car or whoever it might be, uh, that it's my belief that it just don't say anything. You know, there's a lot more than one person in the booth and on the production teams, and uh, that's kind of how I've treated that situation. And I feel like that's probably, a, you know, a more reasonable guiding light to go forward or request. Um, you know, it's not my position or not my right to enforce that by any means, but that's what I think is, is fair if that's what you're asking, Kenny. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I, I, was, I had thought, yeah, because you, they do have other drivers in, sure. in the booths from time to time, obviously – you know, that's not their full-time job. As far and as that's the at the Xfinity level, not the cup level. Right. But, you know, the, the cup level is obviously the, the granddaddy here. You know, it's what makes everything go around. And, and you know, it's a tough balancing act. There's been numerous positions in those situations that have had investments in the sport. Um, and I, I just feel like when you're in those situations that if you had an investment in the sport, uh, that you need to bow away from topics that uh, could be self-serving. Yeah. As far as the racing itself – this weekend, when will you guys actually be running in, in, in something closely resembling a pack so you will know what your cars are going to do when it's around other vehicles? Yeah, that's a really good question for Paul Wolf, my crew chief. <laughs> Maybe a little bit Friday morning. It, like I said, the racetrack here at Michigan always changes between race and practice. Where you have that Friday, it feels like 7 a.m. morning practice, and uh, the track is nowhere near what it will be to race. So. Even if you do run in traffic at that time, it's, it's usually a very poor indicator of what you'll have. So I don't, I don't have a great answer for you, Kenny. I, I think the track's going to change dramatically in the race, uh, not just because of the temperature and difference of an afternoon versus a morning, but uh, probably more uh, so as the track widens out uh, when cars drive up the track, uh, and that'll really change the game. But I, I don't know. We'll go over to Chris Knight. com. Brad, two things real quick. While many of the drivers have elected to take next weekend off, you decided to go to Iowa and compete in the Xfinity race. Was there any meaning behind that, being your first Father's Day and all? Yeah, um, 
and there was a lot of factors. One, I really like Iowa, the racetrack, Chris, and um, you know I've been fortunate enough to win a handful of races there before. Um, you know, we kind of bounced that Xfinity schedule between three drivers with myself, Ryan Blaney, and uh, Joey Logano. Last year, I skipped those races so I could be with my daughter um, when she was born, and you know she ended up being born a week or two before that. But still, I wanted to be with her. Uh, and I kind of felt like um, I had a good opportunity to win the race. I felt like I'd kind of skipped out on those races last year, and I kind of owed it to the team to, to run it this year as one of the, the three drivers in the lineup. And I don't expect that to be every year, um, but this year it felt like the right thing to do for those guys. Okay, and being a Michigan native. And the native, sponsors and all the things that make it happen. Right, being a Michigan native, um, I've seen your career blossom. Yeah. For NASCAR, and this is an important market for NASCAR. What has it done meant for you to be a valuable asset to NASCAR coming back to Detroit? Well, it, it is a, a key market for us. Um, I'm not sure that there is anything greater than our fans to the impact of what we do to our sport and its health. But if there's a close second, it would definitely be the OEMs. Um, at, at this point. The OEMs are, are so important to almost everything we do, and two of the three are based uh, here locally in uh, Michigan, Detroit regions. Um, and I would say that uh, to be in their backyard, it, it kind of, you know, if Dale Jr. is the most popular driver <laughs> and he has one of the biggest fan bases, then, you know, for the car side, this is the most popular car side track. We're going to get the most uh, CEOs, the most executives uh, from the car side. And uh, so I look at that and say it's, it's a huge weekend for us uh, in that respect. Both weekends are. Uh, and I know there will be a strong uh, Ford contingent here, and I'm, I'm sure uh, the same will be said for General Motors. But uh, we need to showcase our sport in the most positive lights in front of those guys, of course, and, and show uh, what we're capable of and, and the audience and the quality of racing and the uh, technology and innovation. Uh, so it's a key weekend for us as a whole uh, and um, you know for that uh, I'm thankful that I'm from that same town as well <laughs> it just uh, for me it puts a lot of pressure coming to this race uh, both races and I've had to be really careful to kind of myself divest from it to, to try to take a step back because I get really mad when we don't win this race <laughs> and we haven't won it yet maybe that means the day when I win it uh, or if we win it that um, I'll be you know ecstatic but uh, it's really a key race for me personally. It's a key race for the sport, um, and, and I'm, I'm glad that we get to come here twice a year. Okay, we'll go to uh, Brant James here next. Brant James, USA Today Sports. Do you have a hot pass today? I Brant got James? taken away. Uh, yeah. Oh, early. did you? Yeah, I'm just going to give that guy Dang. Money. It probably <laughs> went to those other 2,000 people, but go ahead. <laughs> They've got plenty. Um, how uh, difficult or unnerving, what, what have you, is a mid-season rules package change? And do you think it's more difficult for a driver or the engineers and the crew chief and all the smart guys with the numbers and stuff? Yeah, it's, a mid-season rules change to me isn't very unnerving. Um, and I think that's one of the benefits of having the chase format the way it is, is you know, Michigan obviously isn't in a chase. Of course, it could open up a race win for someone to get locked in. Uh, but, you know, with it being positioned where it is in the chase, I don't see it, uh, rules changes in the middle of the year as being as big of a deal as it was maybe 10 to 15 years ago. Um, and for us, it's opportunity. Uh, it's, I think it's the opposite unnerving. I think it's excitement. I think it's opportunity to develop the sport, push it forward, uh, but also for us to really kind of go out all out for a new package and, and not have to worry so much about you know, the uh, severe penalty of having a bad race. So, um, you know, I, I kind of look at it in more of a positive light than anything else. What was your other question? You think, is it harder for the, the engineers? I mean, Oh, yeah, it's guys. harder on the engineers for sure. You know, they, uh, they earn their money on weeks like this for sure. And, um, you know, that, I think that's why you're seeing so much of that uh, influence affect our sport. It just adds to the critical need for really smart people. Uh, in those sectors. He was referring to the smart guys as opposed to as drivers. Opposed to, yeah, yeah, well, I, the non-smart guys. I don't know guys, if you like, were, took offense with that, but. Yeah, no, I think, um, 
yeah, the engineers are a lot smarter than what a race car driver is ever going to be. But you know what happens is over time when the rules say the same year over year over year over year, um, I got the best technology out there called my ass, and uh, <laughs> it tells me what to do to the race car. And uh, you know, so I kind of went out over the engineers when there's not any rules changes. But when there's rules changes, they bring out all these other fancy technologies they have. Believe it or not, they work better than my butt, and um, they went out. So it's uh, kind of a balance between the two. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Kislowski up here in the middle? And then over to Lee. Bob Treat, Associated Press. <clears throat> this has always been a fuel mileage track. Yeah. Um, no one's really talked about that so far. How is this new rules package going to affect that? And certainly it's going to make for better racing, uh, in my opinion, as, yeah. as this race goes on. Yeah, I think, uh, Bob, the, the likelihood, I've never met you before, Bob. I've seen you before, I've never met you. But uh, I think the likelihood of the race being one of the, the better races here at this track is, is very high with this rules package. Um, will it be a fuels mi fuel mileage race? I, I doubt it. I wouldn't say never. <laughs> And there's a lot of factors that can come into play there. With the smaller spoiler, the cars get a, letter, a little better fuel mileage than what they ever have here before, uh, which seems counterintuitive with the speeds being so high. But um, I think that's something that lends itself to having less opportunity. The, the less times you have to pit in a race, the less likely it is that it'll be a fuel mileage race. There's just less opportunity. So uh, we'll pit less than we have or be able to go longer on fuel than we ever have before. So that'll be a factor that I think uh, leads them to leave less opportunity for a fuel mileage race. But also, you would assume with the cars going as fast as they're going down the straightaway and as slow as they are in the corner, uh, that it'll be a little harder on the tires, a little more tire wear, uh, which generally means that um, tires are more important than fuel, all those things. Um, and you'll see comers and goers throughout the race, cars that are fast at the start, cars that are fast at the end of a run. Uh, and that opens itself, itself up for great racing. Uh, so I think there's a lot of factors that are adding up, and, and I would agree uh, with what you said. All right, we'll wrap it up with Ms. Spencer. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Um, what was the thing you were talking about on Twitter about wanting to gain weight? What was that whole thing? Yeah, I, I mean, you'll have to wait till Monday and Tuesday. I, I don't know which one's going to be Monday or Tuesday, and, and then I'll answer that. Is it, is it a muscle thing? I mean, wanting to gain muscle as opposed to actually gaining weight? I, I can't tell you that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you just don't want to look like you're wasting away to nothing week after week? As yeah, I'm, sure. Yeah. Okay. This week you'll know. Yeah. All right, we'll take This coming question. week you'll know, yeah. We got a question over here to... Uh, Taylor DeSormo from M Live. You talked a little bit about fuel mileage, and last week it seemed like everyone was trying to save at the end, but they were telling you to go full for it. Would you say that you guys have a little bit better gas mileage than the opponents right now, or is it about the same? Yeah, we seem to do really well um, at Team Penske with fuel mileage, and there's a number of factors that I'm, I'm not sure I can really add them all up, uh, whether it's uh, the Ford engine spec and Doug Yates and the things he works on, or uh, sometimes the bodies come into play. Um, you know, different cars have different body styles. So, you know, I would say that maybe the Ford doesn't make the most downforce or, or the most side force, but I think it has pretty good drag characteristics. So that uses a little bit less fuel. And I think as drivers, uh, there's some small things that you can do that we do very well um, within our group. So it's hard to pick out which one of those three it is. Maybe it's a combination of all three, but uh, it certainly is a strong suit of us. All right. Thank you for coming in, Brad. Thanks, guys. Good, Good luck this weekend. Enjoy God's country.